Okay, you had a lot of those kind of moments like you had Saturday at Westlake. This is one of the first really big moments you had here. What was that like? And then, you know, what is your mindset as you see them score? You know you're going to get the ball under two minutes left. What are you telling your teammates? Um, we got this. You know, that's really the big thing. It's like, hey, man, let's, you know, just like practice, let's just go put it together. Uh, you know, we do, we have different two minute scenarios every Thursday. Um, we've been doing every week since pretty much fall camp. Um, so, you know, we've done it before and, um, just instilling confidence. You know, we can do it. You know, we didn't have an ounce of, of doubt in our system. And um, we stepped on the field, you know, stepped on freely, not tense, just uh, confident that we'd go score and um, just had to go do it. So, yeah, I think just instilling confidence in the guys. And, um, yeah. Is there something freeing about no timeouts? It's just you guys out there? Um, uh, I don't know if I would put it like that. Um, but, you know, I think that. There is just a freeing aspect of, hey, we have done this before. We've done it when we really needed it. You know, we, we had already done it that game. You know, we had already driven down and gotten a field goal when we needed it and was a huge big time field goal in that game. Um, so, but then we had done it last year versus Kentucky. You know, we've, we've had drives like this. We do it every week versus practice, kind of what I was saying. So when we do step on the field and we've chased those scenarios, um, you know, I feel like I get to step on the field. And, you know, I love in, in those scenarios, I love watching NFL guys go do that. You know, there's a scenario a couple of years ago when, you know, Josh Allen took the field with less than a minute left, went and scored, you know, game's over, 16 seconds left. Patrick Mahomes gets the ball with 16 seconds and drives down the field and goes and scores a game with a field goal. And it's never over till it's over. So I love watching guys above me that do it at really a high elite level. And I feel like I get to step on the field. Um, just with a calm and a present a presence um, that's just calm, cool, and collected, and ready to go score. So that was that scenario in your hallway back at home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you guys all said after the game that you guys all believed you could go out there and win it. There was every single guy on the sideline, and I believe you guys have had that belief, and I, I believe that you have always thought like I can do this but is there a different level because of the Kentucky game because of some of these moments does it feel different now or maybe not even in yourself but around you the belief that has continued to grow and confidence on, on that sideline absolutely you know I think that um you know coach Sweeney said it and he's like you know, I think 99.5% of the teams, um, if they were in our scenario on Saturday, they would have lost the game um, because they just, you know, what we have here, the heart and the belief in what we do, um, it's just really special. Um, and, and the heart to go finish when it's not looking our way. You know, they had the whole momentum, they had everything going their way the whole second half. And we just, you, we were resilient, we persevered, and um, you know, we just defied the odds, and that's that's just kind of what this team is. I think that that's what a championship team is made of, and being able to finish in those close games um, is really special. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just that kind of grit and that kind of just just want to is is definitely really special. Okay, when you have that kind of drive to end the game, is it growing y'all's confidence <clears throat> to win that kind of a game, or is it more just showing everybody else what you guys have already done? Yeah, I think that whenever we are in that scenario, um, just confidence that we can, you know, that that we can go win it, and we've done it before. Um, and there's there's definitely just confidence that hey, it's it's never over till it's over, and that's the truth. So just go finish the game and give everything you have till the very last play. You mentioned how you guys do those two minute scenarios every Thursday. Is yeah, that Wednesday, is that yeah. draw play? something that you've worked on before in that specific scenario? And did you expect it to be the one that scores the touchdown? No, I, I, I did not expect that to to, obvi to definitely score. Um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> they were just playing a lot of two man. And those they were in the, in the first half and then a lot in the second in the in the second one, too. Um, just a lot of two man. So we kind of saw that and Coach Riley had a had a great call. Um, you know, I think it was second and four or something like that. Um, so that's a great call. Just stick draw. Um, it's a great second and four call. You know, go get the first down, um, get a quick another playoff if if, uh, if, we, if we get tackled, and um, but definitely go get all you can. And you know, I'm I'm running down the field. I get it to the second level. It's wide open. We block it up perfectly. 
Um, I get up to the second level. I see the safety coming at me. So I'm like, I got to get out of bounds. You know, we don't have any time out. So I kind of take a right, start going right out of bounds. TJ's blocking this guy. And then the guy peeled around, not letting me get out of bounds. And TJ just kind of kept him going. And then I just kind of reacted and just kind of went with it. Um, but, you know, I mean, we do work those every every Wednesday. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of different every week. Some, some it's, you know, hey, yeah, one time out, you know, touchdown to win it. Two timeouts, uh, field goal to win it. Or, you know, no timeouts, touchdown to win it. Minute and a half, let's go. I mean, we, re we really work a lot of different scenarios that could really happen. Um, and that preparation, I think, has helped me a ton. Just whenever we did get, the, did get to those scenarios, um, you know, we're really ready for them and we know what to do. And, you know, Antonio and Jake on those two catches in the second half, you know, are, are straining to get out of bounds. You saw that in the first half, too. They're straining to get out of bounds. We want, to, we want that clock to stop. So that's just preparation and, and just the knowledge of the game. Those guys are vets in the game, and they know, they know what to do, and, and they know how to play. So. You all face, face a lot of press coverage the last three games. Um, what do you think you all learned just from that, from going through it? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we got great receivers. Um, you know, we, we've got dudes that can go win um, at a very high and elite level, um, and that's really exciting. So, you know, I, I, I love it. You know, I love that, that we got dudes out there that, you know, we've probably got six or seven guys that can really go play um, at a really high and elite level for us. So, you know, they want pressers or not, it's, it's whatever they want. But, um, you know, I, I, I trust in the guys that go get open, so. Obviously, you trust your offensive line, but individually, Blake is flipping to left and the blocker's going to right. Like, how do you reset and stay comfortable in that situation, <laughs> knowing that it's not comfortable for them? Yeah. Um, as weird as it sounds, I don't, you know, I try not to really think about it. I just really just trust them and go play on the back end, you know, and, and go deliver the football. So, um, you know, those those guys are, are doing what they do at a very high level and, you know, it's not like you got two freshmen that are having to switch positions. You got Blake Miller and, and Walker Parks that are moving. Um, so those guys know what they're doing, and I got trust in them. And I get to step on the field and, and not be hesitant and not feel like I have to get the ball out of my hands um, any faster and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable back there with them and um, got full trust in them. You were sacked uh, a season high five times against Pitt. How did you not, I guess, get rattled when the, the pressure was? so like immensely against you on Saturday yeah um you know it was you know we it was a, a different lineup up front so that you know that's we're still it's going to take a little bit to adjust to that but I, I you know I took two sacks that could have thrown it away um at least two um so you know I'll, I'll take credit for those ones um and then you know they're a they're a great rushing team you know, you got to give props to them at the same time. They're, you know, they're blitzing six or seven guys almost every single play um, from every which way they possibly can. So um, you got to give props to them. And then, you know, we just persevered and, and kept pushing through and, and then, uh, you know, went and won the game. So that's what, that's what matters. You talked about trust with your guys, but what about your trust element with guys like Garrett Riley, somebody who's semi new in this program, but two two of y'all who have come in, obviously, with an immense amount of football analogy. <coughs> what does that look like together? What is that as as the season has progressed and as y'all continue to grow together? Yeah, I mean, I've I have never once had any doubt in the play calling or. You know, been frustrated with the way that he's doing things one time. Um, I, I've I've got full. You know, I've got all my chips on on him because you know what he's doing is it's at a very elite level, um, and I see that throughout the week. And I love to watch <clears throat> the way he scouts a team and sees a team, and it's just through another lens. You know, I'm trying my best to see, you know, and see a defense through certain ways, and then I'll look at it one way, and he'll be like, "Yeah, that's that's great," but if we do this from another way. Boom! This might pop it open. Like, you know, that that's why they're paying him the big bucks. So I, I love watching him, but I got all my trust in him, and um, I love I love Coach Riley. Uh, I love getting to go to work with him every day. He makes just he makes you know what we do really fun. Um, and just you know, I, I love him, and I, I love what he does at a very high elite level. How grateful are you to be able to say, "Hey, I can come to work every day." 
every single day and see this coach and trust him completely. How grateful and you know blessed are you to be able to work with a guy that you feel like you mesh with so well? Yeah, super blessed. You know, I think there's a lot of coach or a lot of players out there that, you know, especially if they weren't recruited by the guy, but even sometimes they are, they don't um, necessarily click super well with the coach that they have, and you know that's unfortunate at times. And just places that other guys at other schools that I know that. <clears throat> You know, might not like the guy that they have or whatever, but um, I, you know, it's it's definitely a huge blessing. I mean, we all love Coach Riley, and he's one of my favorite coaches I've ever had. Um, so definitely a huge blessing. Antonio Williams having the career day on Saturdays was there something that you were seeing early in the coverage just to be able to connect with him so often, or is it just the connection you two have built over the season? Oh, uh, both. Yeah, I mean, just the the chemistry that we've been able to build since January. Um, just seeing the game, you know, on the on the first touchdown, it it wasn't really drawn up like that, and he just felt it out, and um, and we made it happen. We're on the same page, and we just made a play. So, um, a couple times, you know, they just put him on an island out there, one on one with the safety, and that's you know, I'm gonna take that all day. So, um, definitely also just have trust in him to to go make plays, and um, just seeing that and seeing what he can do. He he should have had about. Uh, 120 more yards at least, 150 more yards. So, <clears throat> just missed him on two throws. So, um, yeah, he's elite, and and then he shows back up on Monday and yesterday. Um, to show up again with the same mindset he has all year. So, um, that moment running to your mom and dad after the game. Um, you've talked about kind of shrinking the noise and making sure that circle, good or bad, is always just consistent and small. Um, those moments, what do they mean? How special are they? And how fun is it to be able to like watch them back? Yeah, it was really cool. You know, just thankful that you know my bro my mom, my dad, and and my brother Reed could be there. Um, it was a super cool moment. Just trying to find them after the game. You know, we had we had a lot of Clemson fans there, which is you know really cool um, to kind of finish up the game and do the alma mater and and still just have a ton of Clemson people there. So it was kind of hard to find them. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's just really special and just really thankful for them. And um, you know, I, I just know that they love me for who I am and not what I do. So just being able to have them um, to celebrate with, but also to be there, you know, after games that we don't win. Um, so just really thankful for them. I yeah. think back to that. I mean, we have video of you seeing them after the ACC championship game, and so just that consistency that they've been able to provide for you and instill in you through <laughs> all of it, um, just their impact on you and and how they've helped you kind of maintain a level of, of consistency for yourself, maybe even just emotionally. Yeah. Um, and I know certainly spiritually. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel the same love from them week to week, no matter how I play. Um, and that's really special to just, you know, not come home to, but just finish up a game and go see them. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, it's the same reaction every week, no matter what happens. And obviously, you know, they're going to be upset after a loss and um, for me because they know that, you know, I want this so badly. Um, but just to have them in my corner and, you know, we're rarely even really talking about the game after. You know, we're talking about some highlights of it, but, like, it's not like we're sitting there and talking ball for two hours about every little thing that happened. And I know that that's sometimes the case with some other parents is they want to go through all the good and bad and go through the film and stuff. But, like, you know, we just get to go hang out and, you know, my parents and my family live 17 hours away. So, you know, football is a lot of what I do. And, you know, I spend most of my days, all of my days up here all day. Um, so sometimes when I get to hang out with them, it's just talking life and just really sometimes anything but football is just hanging out. And um, just, you know, it's, it's awesome to have my siblings come up to games too when they can. And I know it's a long way. So just really thankful that they get to be able to come to as many games as they do. And um, it's really awesome. So brief though like after a game you had to do like a tv interview you got to see them then you had to like go shower you had to come talk to us and you guys are like on the bus and gone yeah so what's that <laughs> trying to cram that in like what what is that like but at the same time like how truly valuable is that and the impact that those maybe four minutes five minutes that you got there how how important are those yeah i think it just really just keeps the main thing the main thing like it's just it kind of canceled out the noise of everything else going on around here. Uh, just getting to hang out with them, and you know, those are the people that I want to 
celebrate with, but also, you know, be with after a loss. Cause I know that, you know, they're, they're unbiased to everything that's going on. They, you know, they're just, you know, they're for me. And, uh, but you know, I'll get to see them for a brief moment right after the game. And normally I don't get to talk to them for that long. Um, but especially after the game, you know, after shower up and get ready and, and come see y'all. And I normally get to go hang out with them for a little bit after the game and stuff. So definitely get to catch up there. But definitely on the road, it's pretty short. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Though. I know you're very confident in your speed, but Antonio told us post game that like he had a defensive back to say you were playing like Manziel like earlier this year after you ripped off a run. Do you still kind of get a kick of occasionally like doing something that makes defenders go like, whoa, I didn't, I didn't know he had that level, that second level of burst, you know, stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a pretty big comparison right there uh, to Johnny Manziel, so I'll, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> I don't know who but I'm not, I mean, I'm not trying to compare myself to him because that's, you know, that's that's one of the greatest of all time right there. So, um, but that, you know, it's, it's definitely pretty cool. And I'm always talking smack to Tone every day about how I'm faster than him. So um, anytime that he gets to say that, I'm definitely going to go talk to him after this and tell him how. I am faster than them, so no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, definitely, definitely fun to get use my legs every once in a while and go to show when I need to. In the beginning of the season, we kind of spoke about how you have these seven exciting home games, and now you're down to two. So, what are your thoughts, emotions, mindset going into these next two crucial games for the team? Yeah, uh, really, just focus on the one we have right now. Um, you know, we got a, you know military appreciation game, you know, senior night. So I really just want to honor a lot of people this weekend. Um, and, you know, our, our, our eyes are set on this Saturday. And, um, you know, we want, to, we want to go be the best we can on Saturday. Um, and we want to go show what we can do. And, um, but, yeah, you know, love, love being at home. There's nothing like it. And been on the road for a couple of weeks now and, and definitely excited to get back to Death Valley. And um, it's, it's really exciting. What are the emotions around a senior day, especially with, I mean, I think of that list of guys that are potentially um, participating in this, but first and foremost at that list, obviously, Phil Moffa. Yeah, uh, it's, it's tough to kind of wrap your head around sometimes because, you, you know, I think that as like a, a guy who's not a senior, you're just like, oh, it's senior night, whatever. Um, and I'm just like sitting there and I'm like, dang, I only got, you know, I don't even know how many more games with, you know, I get to be back there with Phil um, or, or some of these guys, you know. So um, just that realization is definitely tough sometimes um, because, you know, these guys are, you know, you've, you've been through thick and thin with them. Uh, you've, you've shared life with these guys, you know, for the last, you know, for me, three years um, and like literally shared life. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that, uh, you know, you're going to miss those guys, those guys, but they're also – you know, you're excited for them too, um, no matter who they are, whether they're going to keep playing football or not. Um, you're excited for the next stages, for the next stages of their lives, and uh, but just thankful for what what y'all had together, and um, just enjoy every day left. So, what's your favorite part of the week of the senior day? All the stuff you guys do. <sighs> the game. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I mean. I don't even remember everything that we all do. I know we have a long thing on Friday night that we always do um, to kind of honor all those guys. So that's always really special. Um, but just just trying to get as many of the seniors in the game is always really cool, I would say. Yeah. Take one more for Kate if anybody has one. Just with the still on and down, obviously all have really good chemistry. Um, how do you kind of see other people uh, mixing in there? Uh, in his absence. Yeah, um, you know, we got Tink stepping in and he's, you know, I've got, I trust in him and I tell him that every day. Um, I believe in you and I believe he, he's going to be able to step in and make some plays for us. Um, he's, a, he's a guy that's just, you know, he's shifty, he's fast, um, great hands, just a, he knows the game, just a really, really hard working guy and I think his time's coming so I'm excited for him. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Awesome. Appreciate y'all.